Hello YouTube. I received what I believe is my uh, MFJ909 capacitive antenna coupler or matching coupler from Gigaparts and I'll go ahead and uh, install that and take some readings and share my experience with you. Okay, this is how the uh, MFJ909 comes. This was of course and then the other box you saw, shipped from Gigaparts, uh, shipped very quickly. I believe I ordered it last Friday, and today is Tuesday. So that was nice. Uh, I'm going to use uh, these tools to uh, help match my 40-meter antenna and 20-meter hamstick. The 40-meter antenna is the HVU100, as you may be able to see there, configured for 40 meters. I have the SARC100 antenna analyzer. Uh, which I've which I've shown in some previous videos of questionable accuracy, but pretty close, close enough for this kind of work. And then my more accurate uh, Radio Shack SWR meter, pretty good meter with peak envelope power reading, so you can get reasonably accurate wattage in SSB mode. Uh, works well, uh, inexpensive, and available at your local Radio Shack usually if you still have one near you. I got a uh, uh, short and patch cable, I guess you'd call it, to connect the MFJ909 to the antenna tuner that's already installed in the car, and of course the MFJ capacitive coupler. Okay, this is how it comes. Go ahead and we'll do a little unboxing here. Uh, typical MFJ packaging. This is it, just under some. Quite a few adjustments there. I suspect I'm going to need to use for the 20 meter hamstick one of the one of the lower capacitive values, the 62 or 120, maybe 180, and then probably the 240. If I were to uh, take a guess at what I'll need to match the 40 meter HVU 100. This is the antenna I'll be matching today. This is the OPEC HVU 100, and in this configuration. Uh, it is configured for 40 meters only. There are additional coils you can add. You can add one more uh, to add like 20 meters or 15 meters or 10 meters or any combination, but I've chosen to operate this as my 40 meter single band antenna. No manual is included. Uh, just this little note that says your manual's online. And I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. I've already read the manual. I'm going to be installing this on the rig end. In the manual, it suggests installing it as close to the antenna as possible, but that's not, not really reasonable for me right now. I have no reason to believe it won't perform just fine at the rig end of the connection. Uh, I was reading another in, uh, some antenna instructions. I can't remember which antenna it was, but they talked about in order to match their antenna that an MFJ909 is a fantastic choice, and they said you can attach it to the rig end within easy hand reach. So I'm going to go ahead and use that other antenna manufacturer's instructions for installing this. This is the uh, HBU100 config uh, plugged into the SWR analyzer. I'm going to go ahead and run a, run a scan, and this takes a little while. Um, the antenna is actually pretty reasonably resonant, but only about 2.0 to 1, and only 30, 30 kilohertz of bandwidth. Not, it's tough to work with. So you can see it's showing about 1.8 to 1 SWR at 210, uh, and that's actually for this meter. It's it's been of questionable accuracy, but it's it's close enough for what I've been doing. Uh, I just want to, um, I get the antenna as close as I can, as low as I can in SWR when I'm tuning the antenna with this SWR analyzer. It's usually within, you know, you know, it might read 1.8 here, but it might show up initially as 1.6 on the radio SWR meter or on my Radio Shack SWR meter. The problem I've been having is when I increase the power, uh, it jumps right back up to two, uh, nearly 2.0 to 1. And that's not really acceptable. Um, so, and I don't have much wide, I don't have a very wide bandwidth with my um, 
LDG Z100 Plus Auto Tuner. So I'm going to try to use the capacitive coupler to bring this down in order to get a better tunable range with my antenna tuner. Also, just in case I forget to tune the antenna and I transmit, I'd rather the radio see a lower SWR. Just in case. That does happen sometimes, especially when you're mobile and you're driving and uh, your attention is on other things. So it's nice to have a reasonable match to begin with, even without the antenna tuner. Okay, I'm going to go and attach the coupler and take some additional readings. Okay, I have the MFJ909 mobile antenna capacitive matcher plugged in line. Um, the antenna cable is going directly to the input of the matcher. The output of the matcher is going to the SWR analyzer, antenna analyzer. Uh, the way I plan on installing this is I'll have the antenna lead go into the MFJ909 and then the MFJ909 into the antenna input on the LGG, LDG tuner. And then of course the tuner connected to the transmitter. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and we're at two, we're at where we did the last scan, the antenna's lowest SWR has been has been consistently at 7.210 megahertz, which I think is probably an okay range. And we're at 1.97 to 1. I'm going to go ahead. It's in bypass mode right now. So I'm going to go ahead and add 30 picofarads and see what that does. Okay, it dropped it down to 1.8. Okay guys, I had a little trouble with the video earlier, so I have to reshoot this. Um, since I last saw you, I have already tuned everything up, but I wanted to show you the effect the uh, the MFJ antenna analyzer has on the uh, on the SWR. So, so I've since tuned the antenna for 7.230. <clears throat> right now it's in bypass mode. Um, at this frequency it's showing an SWR 2.33 to 1. Now interestingly enough that's not necessarily the best SWR I can get here because when you add capacitance it seems to electronically lengthen the antenna. So after you add your capacitance you're probably going to have to lengthen the antenna to get back down to the to the frequency you wanted to tune for. But in any event, after it was all said and done, I decided on about 7.230 megahertz. It's actually probably closer to 7.235. Okay, so at that frequency, I'm showing an SWR of 2.25 to 1. That's not acceptable, obviously. I'm in bypass mode. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the capacitance to 30 picofarads, and we can see it has does has an improvement. 62 picofarads, 1.82 SWR. I think I skipped one. That's 180 picofarads. That's 240. And here's what I've ended up with at 320. And that's actually probably pretty accurate. Um, it barely moves the needle when I transmit at high power on my SWR meter when I'm actually transmitting plugged into the Radio Shack SWR meter at this frequency. Um, I have the door open, so that's probably not helping here. You, of course, want to do this with the doors closed. So I'm going to say 7.3. It seems like my phone's having some issues. And I hope this was helpful to anybody considering uh, purchasing one of these uh, excellent MFJ capacitive couplers.